Question 4 says a 10-gram bullet is fired into and embeds itself in a 1.95-kilogram block attached to a spring with a force constant of 16.2 newton meters, and whose mass is negligible. How far is the spring compressed if the bullet has a speed of 300 meters per second just before it strikes the block and the block slides on a frictionless surface? Note, you must use conservation of momentum in this problem because of the inelastic collision between the bullet and the block. So what we have are three different things. We have a bullet. So the, the bullet has a mass of, let's just call it the, the mass of the bullet, is equal to 10 grams. So in kilograms, 0 0.01 and then you have the block, so the, the mass of the block, we'll call it BL. The mass of the block, it says, is 1.95 kilograms. So this is kilograms. And then you also have the spring, who, which doesn't have a, a mass, but it has a force constant. So we have the spring, it has a force constant equal to 16.2 newtons per meter. The question also tells us that the bullet has a velocity the bullet has a velocity equal to 300 meters per second. And this is all we're given. We do know that there's an inelastic collision. So we know that the, the bullet is traveling from the gun. It hits the block and it gets embedded in. So it doesn't bounce off. The, the wood doesn't bounce away. They're stuck together. So it's a perfectly inelastic collision. And so what we can do is we can set up a conservation of momentum. So the, the momentum is equal to the the velocity times the mass. So with perfectly inelastic collision, what we can say is that the the velocity of the bullet plus the velocity of the block, I mean not the velocity, the momentum of the bullet, the momentum of the block is equal initially, so this is all initial, is equal to the momentum of the of the bullet plus the block uh, in the final state. And so what I can say is I can say that the mass of the block times the velocity of the uh, I mean the mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet plus the mass of the block times the velocity of the no, that should be BL times the velocity of the block is equal to the mass of the the mass of the bullet uh, times the velocity of the bullet in the final state so this is final plus the mass of the block times the velocity of the block in the final state. So this is final. Okay, so the initial uh, the initial relationship of the bullet and block. You can see that the, the bullet the the momentum of the bullet and the momentum of the block initially is equal to the momentum of the bullet and block in the final state. And so what we know about the final state is that the velocities of the bullet and the block are the same in the final state. So what we can do is we can change this to the velocity uh, the velocity final times the mass of the bullet plus the mass of the block. And so, and what we know on this side is that the, the mass of the block initially is zero. So what we have is the mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet is equal to the final velocity times the mass of the bullet plus the mass of the block. Well, the mass of the bullet we said was 0 0.01 kilograms and the velocity of the bullet was 300 meters per second. And this is equal to the final velocity times, and we said the mass of the bullet again was 0 0.01, and the mass of the block we said was 1.95, and that's both in kilograms. So what you should be able to see is that if I divide this term to the other side, then I can find the final velocity, and so that's what I can do. I can put 0 0.01 kilograms times 300 meters per second divided by 0 0.01 plus 1.95 is going to equal my final velocity. And so the, the final velocity of this thing should be 1.5306 meters per second. And this is how fast it's going whenever the, the very moment that it, it hits the block. Now that we know the final velocity or the initial velocity of this thing, we can use the, the potential energy uh, to figure out the the compression. So uh, we can say that the initial kinetic energy plus the initial potential energy is going to be equal to the final kinetic energy 
this uh, an F, plus the final potential energy. And so uh, what we do know is that whenever the bullet initially hits, the spring is at equilibrium. So basically there's no, there's no uh, change of X, and so the potential energy initially of the spring is zero. And at the final kinetic energy, whenever the spring is compressed all the way, there's a brief moment where the 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 direction of the of the travel is going from one way and it stops and goes the other way. So at that point that it stops is the final kinetic energy, and that's at zero. So we can say that the initial kinetic energy is equal to the final potential energy. And so kinetic energy is is one half the mass times the velocity squared, and that's going to be equal to one half of k, the the spring constant, times the the change of x squared. And so we want to solve for this change of x. We need to multiply over the one half, the uh, two to both sides, and that'll cancel out the one half. And then we will divide over the k. So we'll have m v squared divided by k is equal to the change of x squared. And then we'll just take the square root of both sides, and we get that x equals the square root of the mass times the velocity squared over k. And so what you should get is that the, the change of x is equal to 0 0.532397. And that's when you plug in for the mass. Uh, so remember, it was 1.95 for, for the block, 1 .0 0.01 for the bullet. So the mass is going to be 1.96. The velocity squared, we just said that the velocity was, was 1.53, and so you take 1.53 squared, you divide that by the force constant, it tells us in the problem is 16.2 uh, newton meters, newtons per meter rather, you take the square root of all that, and you should get 0 0.532357.